Hi, we have Chico and Co. Our names are um, Onyx Mia Bartlett and Stephanie Castaneda. We both go to school at Brookstone Junior High and in a, are in eighth grade, and our group name is Chico and Co. So, a farm requires time, physical labor, and an ability to monitor it. Monitor it. So what we decided to take on was automating a moving high tunnel. So as you can see here, um, a stationary high tunnel just looks like a, your standard greenhouse, but a movable high tunnel has rails that you would have to push it on, and because it has a steel frame, it's very heavy to do. So our client, Ms. Katie Swanson, is the owner of Sweet Union Farm. She works very hard to grow a variety of fruits and vegetables to feed Clam Falls. She recently bought, bought a new property and wants to have the high tunnels to help her grow plants because like some need protection earlier than they can get that time. So um, our client's problem is that she needs the high tunnels to move, wants them to move on their own, and needs them to move accurately and efficiently. So um, basically she just needs them to move and needs them to, like, to be able to stop. So our client considerations are while movable high tunnels, they do exist. They are like heavy and they require more than just one person to push it. And um, our client has a budget of about ten to thirty thousand dollars, which gives us enough resources to be able to build a functioning high tunnel and high tunnel track that will move efficiently. So our device solves the issue of manually moving a heavy high tunnel. Usually high tunnels have steel frames, which makes them very, very heavy. Um, utilizing a radio uh, control microbit system, the device can move or can control the movement of the high tunnel while not having to manually move it. Okay, so our idea on how to incorporate a microbit into our solution is a radio system. Once the client wants to move the high tunnels, she could just press a button on a controller microbit that will send a signal to a receiving micro bit over here on, our, on the high tunnel that will then move and stop depending on what she does and where she wants it to go. So our code demonstrates a, a simple on and off button. First, it sets the radio group. If a button is pressed, then the servo will run at 50% in a forward direction, positive. If the B button is pressed, then the servo will stop it, its motion and it would run at 0%. Innovation and impact. Our device is different because there is no product like this on the main free market. There is movable high tunnels, but they require a group of people and are very heavy, would not be able to be able. pushed by somebody by themselves. Make, it helps people have more resourceful farms. You can have like tomatoes growing at one point and having them covered, and then have spinach growing that doesn't need to be covered. And then once your tomato is done, let's say your spinach needs covering, you can just move the high tunnel in one day without having to get a group of people together to do it. Um, it opens up who can have a farm. Now, currently, in order to have a farm, you have to be able to actively be able to push things that could need to be pushed. And this can help make it so that people that have slight disabilities or possible disabilities can move them and have a farm, even if it's just a smaller one. It helps sustain the basin as well, as it makes it that more local people can have farms to help give the basin more locally grown food. And then it also makes the farm table a more accessible movement by allowing more people to be in it. Um, so next, we'll show you our mini model. So as you see in that video, um, our mini model basically is running and then we can turn it off and it immediately stops. Which is done by a servo that we have attached up to the wheel, which when told to 
spins the wheel, which in turn will spin the track that it runs on. And we chose this track because it makes it so there's no need to install a track into the ground, which it could make it harder to have, have tunnels that are possibly next to each other if the track is there because they may be too close and so you have to spread it out, which would make it where you have less space for your farm. These, however, just need room that they're not directly rubbing up against it because they may get stuck on each other, but they can, if they have a small gap in between, they'll run by each other smoothly. So our next steps is to make a more two-scale model. So right now, obviously, um, uh, Miss Katie Swanson wants a model, like a functional high tunnel that's like 50 by 70. Obviously, our mini model does not accomplish that. Um, uh, we want to make a fully functional like mini model slash make the code work. So um, basically, we just want a more two-scale model that works and the code can be more complex so we can run it forwards and backwards. Um, getting this picked up by professionals. So what we want to do is just get this put into somebody's hands that can make this a reality because while this is a competition We want it to work for our client and we want it to help open up who can have a farm um, Our limitations are resources. So currently um, we will not have access to any resources over the summer So we got it. Okay. Thank you for your time